Hey everyone, this is John McNaughton and welcome to the Patriot Art Show. And we're in my studio today. This is where I do this. Uh, this is where I make the magic happen. And uh, it's fun to do this show with my good friend, Seth Adam Smith, who's with us here. And hi, Seth. Howdy. Couldn't do it without Seth's help. Howdy. So, <laughs> um, I do this show every Wednesday right now. I try to get it on around 515. And uh, we just talk about stuff that's going on in the news. And I show you what I'm working on, my new paintings and my new sketches. And just have fun. And I like to hear what comments you have or questions and we put that up here it's one of the cool things about doing a live show but before we do anything if you haven't already subscribed help us out by clicking that button and following us here on this youtube channel so what i want to start with today is giving you a little sneak peek of my newest painting that i've just started and all i've done is the sketch so far and uh, to give you a hint, it has Trump in it. And uh, Trump is in this kind of imaginary scenario. <laughs> and <laughs> so here's, here's the sketch. Can you tell what's going on? He's kind of got that look on his face like, that's right. I know what I'm doing. What, do you, what is this? Looks like, like he's, uh, looks like he's going to race in nascar or something what, what would be the what would be a good title for this painting <laughs> if, if trump's going to be driving a nascar what kind of stickers who would be promoting them it's got to be patriotic it's got to well, be let's be let's be clear it's not it's not a nascar it's it's just a car it's a... yeah it's not nascar really <laughs> but um yeah it's not nascar it's just fast. So I was thinking of calling this one, Let's Go Brandon. And uh, it'll be fun. You know, just one of those fun ones. Yep. I'll probably have it done in a couple of weeks and we'll show it to you. So anyway, that's the one I'm working on. And uh, right now there's a lot of crazy stuff in the news. Um, but one of the things that, that uh, Seth and I were talking about before the program that we thought was interesting was, What's going on with Disney and Florida? What do you think of that, Seth? Oh, yeah. Well, breaking news on Florida. Uh, they just voted to uh, get rid of some of Disney World's special privileges there in Florida because, because Disney was going up against uh, against politics there in Florida. And right. the governor there, he's he's uh, he doesn't stand for any of that nonsense. And no, so he's no DeSantis, promoting. he's he's smart, you know. If uh, if if Disney's going to use all their their woke uh, people to try to influence the politics of Florida, then they don't qualify for all that special tax treatment that they've got. They've got to be neutral. No. No. DeSantis knows that, and so this could end up costing Disney millions, tens of millions of dollars, and right. there's nothing they can do about it. Which I think is pretty cool. You know, I mean, I hate. I'm so sick of. The, uh, the woke um, media telling everybody what to do, even telling states what to do. And finally, you know, you got somebody like DeSantis that can stand up to these people. And it's right. really refreshing. You know? It's amazing. It's amazing to watch. And it, I, I would just, I would hate to be a, uh, a celebrity um, <coughs> in, in the woke sphere of uh, Disney right now. <laughs> I know, man. It's, it's just nuts. Oh, wait so, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got a great comment here from Bill. Uh, you might want to think about this uh, for your painting, John. <laughs> have him driving a Tesla? <laughs> now, that's a cool idea. <laughs> but I nice did want to have all the stickers, like the um, the different sponsors on his race car. But it could okay. be a tes Tesla. But, yeah. uh, you know, I couldn't use the logo because when I do these paintings, I have to be careful about using things that could get me in trouble. It's always been like that, but uh, it's free domain to use uh, political figures. So I have fun with that one. Good idea, though. Good idea. Yeah. So um, let's go ahead and, and start. Let me show them the, the one I just finished. This is a celebrity that I've always wanted to draw. Clint Eastwood. You know, he's he's got a really good face. 
And, you know, he has gotten like a lot of, of these uh, tough guy politicians. Eventually they get into politics. You know, we saw it with Reagan. You know, we've seen it with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Of course, I don't really care for his politics. But this uh, Clint Eastwood, you know, he's been a mayor in California and, uh, you know, he's kind of a libertarian. So he kind of bucks up against a lot of those Californians. But he spoke at the uh, 2012 Republican convention when Romney was running. I actually happened to be there in Florida when this was going on. And uh, it was cool. You know, somebody sponsored me and brought me down there and I had a, a venue. And, um, and I remember when he got up and gave his interesting speech. And this was one of the things he said. Uh, but go ahead and start the sketch and uh, you can watch me draw this. And uh, we can just kind of talk about about this interesting phenomena of Hollywood and and some of these celebrities. Uh, again, I always start with the eye because it's the window to the soul. There's something about Clint Eastwood. You know, he gets more scary looking the older he gets. I don't know what it is. He's cool looking. You know, he's, he's I mean, you don't want to meet that guy in a dark alley because he looks like he'd kick your butt. <laughs> Even, but, even uh, as old as he is, how old is he right now? That'd be in his eighties. In his eighties, wow. he's got to be. He he looks pretty. He looks kind of healthy, you know. He's uh, but uh, you know he's he's hanging in there. Uh, oh, Mary Ellen from Florida. Thanks. So uh, I'm starting with the eye there, and you can already see that just tough look he's got. And uh, I'm just having a ball drawing these. You know, I've thought about doing some other conservative celebrities. You know, uh, you've got um, uh, Sylvester Stallone's a conservative. Um, you've got uh, that that one guy who is the one who was in in Die Hard, Bruce Willis. Oh yeah, Bruce Willis. Yeah. He, he recently got the that he has that diagnosis where he's he's sick. Yeah, I he's saw that. That's, that's that's kind of sad, but yeah. um, he's got some kind of it's like a, a muscle issue but it also affects some of his memory or, or something like that but these guys are getting up there in their age uh, noreen and says he's 91 years old clint eastwood he's my age 91 wow that's impressive i and we're still scared know, of him we're still scared that? of him. you're still scared of clint eastwood he's 91 years old you're i know scared. he's 91 he's still <laughs> tough yeah <laughs> Yeah, what an interesting guy. Um, but there's a lot of these different celebrities I've thought about drawing. Um, go ahead, make my day. <laughs> my best. That's my best effort. Okay. Um, put the other sketch I did of Chuck Norris. Throw that up there. Sure. Okay. So I drew Chuck. This was probably five years ago. And I used to draw these little doodle sketches in my sketchbook. And I still do sketchbook drawings. I just flesh them out a little more. So this was a real quickie. And this is when I first started putting these quotes with, with some of these little sketches of different people I would draw. Uh, so Chuck Norris, I thought if Chuck Norris were president, he could roundhouse those Al-Qaeda punks and close the borders with one kick. I made that joke up myself. It's kind of <laughs> it's kind of weak. <laughs> well done, well done. We it's we, okay. We got, I heard better hey, one. I'm going to pose this question to your to your viewers here. I, I said to John, I said it would be awesome if we did a full one two hour video live stream of him sketching Chuck Norris, and all we did was give Chuck Norris jokes the entire time. <laughs> Nothing else. I've never seen Norris. anybody do that. Are you, yeah, you're right. And, and you know what? Because it's a Chuck Norris joke, it would be the best live stream ever. Oh, have, have you, you seen know, the, heard... the COVID ones where they they say, you know, Chuck Norris didn't get COVID. COVID got Chuck Norris. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I heard Chuck Norris once was interviewed and they asked him about it and he loved it. He says oh, he it's hilarious it. and he, he thinks it's awesome when people say these jokes. So nope, that's nope. cool. Yeah. So <clears throat> show the other one, the other sketch I did. This is an older one, too. Charlton Heston. I like when that. When did you guy. do this one? What? When did you do this one? Probably six years ago. Just little sketches in my sketchbook. You know, I didn't spend a lot of time on them. I, I tend to spend a little more time on them today. But uh, let's see. What is this? I've loved those Chuck Norris commercials that make fun of his skills. 
he's such a great guy. He can laugh at himself. Yeah, no kidding. No. Yeah, he's awesome. Okay, so this was something that that uh, Chuck or Charlton Heston actually said that political correctness is tyranny with manners. Mm. Ah, that's kind of deep. Liz. Yeah, he was the head of the NRA at one point, and and uh, he had started to have his Alzheimer's, and they presented him with a really nice gun as a, an award, and he held it up, and he said something like, you know, for my, how did he say it, my, my dead fingers? <clears> my, my cold dead hands. My cold know. dead hands. In yeah. other words, you know, come and try to take it from me. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Let's go back to the sketch I was working on. So I'm um, working on... Uh, drawing Mr. Glenn Eastwood and it's fun how so how quickly it starts to look now I'm I think I sped it up just a little bit I don't know maybe I didn't if I did speed it up I didn't speed it up much because that looks like my regular drawing speed maybe it is my regular drawing speed but I don't make a lot of erase marks I just kind of start sketching and letting letting the pencil go in different directions and uh, using that as my way of kind of adding to the form that I'm working on. Hey, who is that that just was on there? Who is that? Oh, okay. Tesla. Yeah, that was in response to a, a previous when they saw. Oh, I thought those were the people that I. <laughs> Dan DeSaul. I thought you were somebody that I knew. That's why I, I was like, wait a second. I'm trying to look at my sketch while while we're talking, and then people come up, and then I am. I want to talk to them too. Yeah, we were talking about the maybe putting a Tesla in one of those Trump paintings, you know, the NASCAR racing painting. And yeah, the, 300 yeah. miles isn't that far. Yeah, not that That's far. Weird. So, yeah, I I drove in a Ray Van car yesterday. A friend had, I think that that's what it's called, Ray Van or Ray Von. It's a it's an electric car, and uh, it went from zero to sixty in three seconds. And I had never felt that kind of torque before. I I guess I'm unexperienced, but that was crazy. Anyway, that's off topic. So I'm uh, here putting in putting in uh, Clint Eastwood's face, and uh, it's, it's starting to come around. Yeah, that was fun. I like Clint Eastwood. I like the quote that I found from him from that uh, convention. I thought it was kind of cool. So you were there at the 2012 convention. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I guess you were out in a booth, you were out vending, uh, selling paint. Yeah, I had a booth that was nearby and we, I was with some friends that uh, basically, uh, hosted me out there. And, uh, it was interesting when we had that booth while I was there, uh, Tom Brokaw walked by and started looking at my painting, the forgotten man. And I had stepped out to use the restroom. So I didn't get to talk to him. I found out from the people and they asked him about it. He's like, they're like, what do you think? And he's like, interesting yeah, he's the one who talks like he's got a broken jaw oh, 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 oh. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> all right interesting you can see that i like to do bad bad uh, imitations of voices <laughs> <laughs> well, you can paint too so i can paint but i can't do improvisations too well <laughs> all right so yeah that was that was cool that was cool but he was speaking he did that kind of that infamous scene uh, with the chair with Mitt Romney where he was had the empty that chair. Obama was sitting in the empty chair. Yeah, he had the empty chair and he was comparing it to uh, Obama. And and uh, it was it was funny because it was so confusing. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. It was, I remember watching it like, is he okay? Is Clint okay? Yeah, well, Clint's got his, uh, his own opinions and he was probably being a little bit uh, esoteric or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but maybe he did us a favor because uh, that kind of that kind of downgraded uh, took the energy level down for when Mitt Romney actually came out. People are like, "What? What? Gosh, is, what did you just watch?" I can't believe I can't believe I voted for him. I mean, at the time, he, he seemed seemed like he was a great candidate. Yeah, I always thought it was so weird the way at the end of his. Uh, candidacy at the end of the election he kind of petered out and stopped getting aggressive he just yeah gone. Is like i don't understand it you know but you know he's a horrible senator for utah he's he's one of our senators here in utah and uh he's he, i think he announced recently that he probably wouldn't run again which is no surprise because yeah. there's no way he'd get elected no he's but exactly. here he is i mean the former former candidate for president 
You remember and, I sent you I sent you the um that video clip of Tucker Carlson talking about Governor Cox and right. Mitt Romney. That was one of the best segments I've ever seen. Yeah, he's like, he "What's wrong brutal. with Utah? <laughs> yeah. What is wrong with Utah? We yeah, got the worst I governor." Know. I only know of a couple of 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 people, uh, very liberal women, who support Mitt Romney, and they don't live in Utah. They live right. outside. Right. It's like so the the very people who he's supposed to represent in Utah, nothing. Well, so, he ran on a pro-Trump campaign. You know, Trump mm-hmm. gave him his endorsement. First day in office, he writes that long uh, uh, op-ed in the um, the, uh, the Washington. No, the what, what was it? The the Journal. I can't. Uh, I hate it when I forget right in the middle of talking. Now, Melba, Melba Mom uh, wrote such a sorry excuse for a senator. Utah yep. really blew. We did, and we're sorry about that. We're, I don't know what what it was bad. It was yep. bad. Um, Washington Journal. Um, Washington anyway, Post. yeah. Anyway, he wrote this this long article why he didn't like Trump his first day in office, and and he just turned out to be such a sellout to the Republican Party. He was the only only senator that that voted that voted to impeach. Um, Trump that was a... And it wasn't even all in. He, like he does, he does 50-50. He's not, he doesn't have anything that he stands for. Like he, he voted for one article of impeachment, but against another article of impeachment. He couldn't even stand in, all in on something. No, no. He's definitely, he was definitely one of those rhinos. Yep. He is the rhino. He is the, the image the of a rhino. the epitome of a rhino. I mean, if there ever was a rhino, it would be him and John McCain. <laughs> That's right. Anyway, it's it's kind of cool the way this is starting to look like Clint so quickly. Mm-hmm. Well, somebody had written that. Uh, so Vicky Taylor had written that the sketch right now kind of looks like Charlton Heston. <laughs> they got that gritty, that uh, weathered face, angry. Right. Kinda Charlton Heston is one of my favorites. Um, one I was just mentioning earlier that that movie he did. Um, you know, he did the, of course, he did the, the, the Ten Commandments, which we love, Planet of the Apes, which was kind of crazy. But he did this movie that I really liked called um, The Agony and the Ecstasy. I remember watching this when I was younger and I was fascinated by it because I've always loved uh, that artist, Michelangelo, you know, and what he did. Um, uh, let's see. What? Uh, so I, I I think that that I always thought that would make a I want to I want to do a, a sketch of Michelangelo, but I've never done one yet. That might be somebody I want to do because I really I really like his work. There's um there's one artist that I did sketch that is one of my favorites, and that's Leonardo da Vinci. Put that sketch up if you would. That's that's a cool one. So I did all these different sketches of artists that I admire. And uh, I, I've always admired Da Vinci uh, just because of his curiosity and always kind of digging in and doing it his own way. You know, I uh, he was an interesting person. So I found uh, some sketches that supposedly he had done as like a self-portrait. And I tried to reinvent that in a way that I thought would represent what I thought how Da Vinci would look. And then I found this really cool quote. To become an artist, you have to be curious. That's absolutely true, you know. And I'm always curious about uh, not just my craft, but what's going on in politics. So I liked, I liked that, and and he was too, you know. This guy was very much. Uh, he he'd probably be considered a conspiracy theorist in his day, <laughs> but uh, very cool. Now there's another. There's some other artists I really admire. Um, there's. Uh, now, and I like these artists for different reasons. So you'll be surprised the, the next one I'm going to show you. Pull up Pablo Picasso. Okay. So again, you know, he's got an interesting face. That's always one of the things <laughs> that I have to think about before I decide if I want to draw him. But Picasso I admire not because I want to create his style of art, but the fact that he did something different and new, you know, he kind of, he did it his own way. And I admire that in any artist. Um, 
And, you know, it takes a lot to put yourself out there like a guy like him. He was a very successful artist for his time. So let's see, I wrote this quote, others have seen what is and asked why. I have seen what could be and asked why not. It's kind of an interesting way of looking at things. You know, as an artist, I'm very much a, what I would call a contrarian. You know, when everybody's going one way, I seem to be the one, the one and only or amongst just a few that are going the other direction. If I hear everybody in the news saying, well, this is how this was, I will have to wonder what's the truth. You know, is there something more that we're not seeing? Because it seems like a lot of times I, I'm just very skeptical. I'm, I'm a little cynical of the news. And as an artist, I've always felt like I'm bucking heads with the establishment. Even when I was in art school, it's crazy. So, oh, what's this? Watching from Sydney. All right, man. Maria De Carlo. <clears throat> That's so cool. It's fun. You know, I get letters from people all over the country uh, in different countries like Sydney, uh, in like France and, and England and Scotland, Ireland, uh, Middle East. You know, people that uh, believe in the same principles of liberty that I believe in. And they're attracted to the art. Uh, on my Instagram right now, I think it's something like um, six, 20, 16 or 20 percent of my followers are from Iran. That blows my mind, you know. I mean, they got to be careful. They're going to get arrested. So <laughs> I just think that's, that's just crazy. Let's go back to. Uh, you got another comment here from Odessa, Texas. All right. Jamie, Odessa. Jamie Knight. Let's go back to Clint Eastwood. Got to finish that up. All right. So I'm starting to flesh out the face a little bit more. Um. You know, one of the things in the news that's going on that that continues to kind of catch my interest is this whole deal with Twitter and uh, Elon Musk. Uh, it's just like, like he. It seems like he's determined to take over that that company, which would be an amazing thing for the entire country, honestly, um, because we need more free speech uh, and. I heard Glenn Beck talking about this the other day, and, and he said that they have right now the way that Twitter's operating, it's kind of like a, um, a staked, a staked, what do you call it, a stockholder stakeholding. Mm -hmm. I think that's the term. And oh, that's, where, that's where a, a company is not acting in the best interest of its shareholders. Mm -hmm. And that can be illegal. You know, when, when uh, you have somebody like an Elon Musk that makes a, a a high bid offer to take the company and they turn it down. Uh, that's like almost like taking away money from the sh shareholders. And then he also pointed out something that I thought was interesting and in that uh, Twitter is only about one twentieth the size of Facebook. Whereas Facebook, you know, doesn't have nearly the reach that Twitter does. It shouldn't be that way. Twitter should be hands down the biggest social media platform as far as bringing in revenue for their shareholders. Right. And so that may be one of the incentives that Elon Musk is looking at. I mean, I, I know he's a big free speech guy and he's kind of an innovator and, uh, you know, he, he, he likes to talk about how he does what he does for humanity, but gosh, darn it. I mean, that, that is a opportunity. If he can turn around Twitter, that's going to make a lot of money for a lot of people. Um, however, I, I don't know if he's going to go, he, he would go private if he did it. I don't know. It, it's all interesting to me. He'll go private for sure. That's, I think that's his number one goal is to take it private. He doesn't want it to be a public resource anymore. Yeah. Um, that's what's well, it would be a lot of fun himself. to see open dialogue between, um, conservatives and liberals and not have all this, uh, censorship. I mean, it's insane that they've even got away with it, but yeah. You have got a lot of people announcing where they're watching from. Oh, from got, Canada, too. We got Canada. We had Odessa, Texas. Uh, we had another person from Sydney, Australia. Um, oh, another Sydney. And then uh, Teresa said North watching Carolina. from Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, and I then, appreciate it, you guys. It's so nice to, to get that kind of feedback. You know... This whole YouTube show is kind of a unique thing for me because I tend to be very private. You know, for many years, McNaughton was this mysterious guy because 
I just didn't do interviews. I didn't do hardly anything. I, I did uh, some videos that Seth would help me with, but those were kind of scripted, kind of, um, you know, just mostly showing off the artwork. But in this format, I can talk openly about how I feel about my artwork and what I'm doing. And I can take questions from you. Uh, and I just relax. I mean, we don't really, this, we kind of wing it here. Wow. <laughs> Naples, Florida. Then we got uh, Northwest uh, Lower Michigan. Oh, wow. Boy, everybody's telling us where they're from. I haven't seen that yeah, before. We should That's do that cool. before. We should always ask people where they're, where they're talking from. We got a really good comment here. I want you to respond to it okay. uh, from Sandy. I'm going to put it up there. Hey, John, I met you a few weeks back. Whenever I was with the U.S. Naval Sea Cadet, we finally, we definitely enjoyed all of your paintings, especially the ones that you sent me to a self-report profit for the U.S. Naval Sea Cadet. We sure enjoy your artwork. Portrait, you. self, a self-portrait. Anyway. Self-portrait for the U.S. Maybe there's some, uh, I don't know, Navy Sea Cadet. We sure enjoy your artwork. Thank you for being. You, buddy, John Hosey got a colonel retired. Well, thank you, Sandy. Um, that's cool when people say those nice things. I appreciate it. All right. What do you think? Is it starting to look a little bit like uh, the man? Yep. James here good. is watching from Arkansas. Sweet. Go ahead, punk. Make my day. Fascinating watching you work. I can draw anything but not people. I've tried. Not good. I like how <laughs> you start from the inside of the face and work out. Do you look at a copy of the picture while you draw or from memory? I'm from Rochester, New York. Okay, so I've tried different styles of drawing. I've tried the way where you make the full egg shape and you kind of break it up and start laying it in little by little. Um, but I found that when I'm trying to do this style of expressive drawing, that it works best to find that focal point. Of the picture which is usually the dominant eye and everything else builds on that and so i work it out now when i'm doing um painting i don't necessarily do it this way i'll i'll actually block in the the big shape of the face and the light and shadow and then work out from there but when i'm doing a drawing like this it helps to start with the eye and that's 99 percent of the time the way i'll i'll do it um, as far as phot photography, uh, like for this picture, what I did was I found several pictures of um, Clint Eastwood online, and uh, there was one that looked more like this than the others. But then I would use those to kind of help me capture the look. So most of the time I'll use, you know, two or three different photographs and kind of build it out from there. When I'm doing paintings or drawings of uh, like presidents of the past or people that have already died i'll often pose a model and have to morph their face into what that person looked like and so that can be really challenging you got to know the anatomy of the face and whatnot but it's all fun you know people say oh i don't know how you do that and and honestly you're just learning the tricks if you learn the tricks of the trade uh, what seems magical to other people becomes more, more simple. Uh, I mean, I really don't think too hard about what I'm doing while I draw because I already know the method. I just start putting in the strokes, you know, the, uh, the shapes and, and the form of what I'm drawing. And it just kind of magically turns out. I don't have to worry about, oh, does it look like them? In fact, as I'm drawing this, I'm not even worrying or thinking about, oh, does this look like Clint Eastwood? I just draw it. You know, for me, the challenge is getting what I see in my head to appear on my canvas or my my paper. That's the challenge. Oh, another North Carolina person. Thank you. That's really cool. So Clint Eastwood, he's uh, he's coming along. I'm going to put in the rest of them there. Um, you know, I've liked I've enjoyed doing a lot of different uh, famous people over time. Uh, I did a painting few years back called Via Dolorosa that uh, was based on, you know, the path that Christ carried his cross. And I had this idea of making it kind of different in that all the people around him were people from history that had an impact on Christianity. 
And so it wasn't like a typical snapshot of some historical moment that had deeper meaning. And so, you know, some of these people that got into that painting were kind of interesting. Uh, will you show that? Will you show that one that uh, Seth that I had that snapshot from the Via Dolorosa? Okay, so here's one of them. And this is the left side of the painting. You can see uh, Mother Teresa. Uh, she's behind the cross. And you've got Joan of Arc in the front. Uh, you know, it was fun to research how these people either looked or may have looked as I created this. You know, they all had meaning. Uh, the Via Dolorosa, that means the, the walk of pain. Uh, that's actually me that's behind the hand of Mother Teresa. You can't see the rest of me, but that's me kneeling down. It's kind of fun. I put myself in a lot of these pictures. And, um, behind Mother Teresa, you've got Isaiah right behind her. Um, and then right over the top of Isaiah is, uh, um, oh, the from the Underground Railroad. Do you remember her name, Seth? Yeah, it was, uh, it's Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman, yeah. yeah. I've drawn her and painted her a few times. Uh, you got, you can see, uh, let's see, Lenin behind uh, Joan of Arc, and and then behind Lenin, you've got Nero, and there's uh, Jefferson. And way in the back there, you can see right next to Jefferson is uh, the uh, uh, Osama bin Laden. Um, over on the far left is Martin Luther King. He's got his hand over his face. And behind Martin Luther King, kind of walking through the crowd, is uh, Satan. Kind of reminds me of that scene from The Passion, you know, when Satan kind of moves behind there. Um, it's kind of, I think it's, I think it's, this was a fun painting to do. There was literally a hundred figures, identifiable different figures in this painting. Because there was both good and bad people that have had an influence on Christianity since it began. And they're all interesting. So it's a lot of history there. Go to the other picture of the video. Yeah, this is a close-up right behind the Christ figure. Um, you can see right over the shoulder of the man uh, in the suit, you've got Michelangelo. And he's looking. He's, he's one of the closest ones to Christ there. You've got da Vinci, uh, the man with the, the kind of the gray hair. That's Handel that wrote Handel's Messiah. Rembrandt uh, is right above him. And then the man that kind of looks like a Jesus figure is actually Raphael. He's right behind the, the face of the man in the suit. Um, and the man in the suit represents, you know, the Christian that has to make a choice of whether he'll stand up for what he believes, you know, or he'll listen to the people in the crowd. So a lot of personal uh, meaning behind this picture. You know, the, the Jesus figure holding the cross, he's kind of looking out at the viewer, like, what are you going to do? Um, that was that was a lot of, uh, I wouldn't say the word is fun, but it was a challenging, exciting painting to do. Uh, how long does it take you to paint something like this? Chris, Chris, Christiana asked me. It takes about two months to do something that's this big. You can look up this painting on my website at johnmcnaughton.com. It's called Via Dolorosa, and you can see the full painting. It's got quite a bit in it. But I like doing different faces uh, of different historical people and celebrities. I, I find it exciting, especially if I can find some kind of quote or something to discuss and re relevant to what I'm doing. Uh, let's go back to the, the sketch. I'm going to finish up Clint Eastwood. So laying in his suit, yeah. That, I should have sped this one up a little bit. It's taking long. Can you go on, kind of go to the end there? <laughs> you don't want. You don't want to watch. Watch, watch me draw his jacket. Suit. We do have a comment here from John Bush. Um, he's talking about a studio visit, and I know your studio is private, but is there an area mm -hmm. where you go vending uh, in the next two weeks? Um, um, yeah, I, hard. yeah, I, my studio is private, but, uh, I go and sign prints at a place in American Fork. And if you make an appointment with my, uh, my assistant, then, uh, we can work something out. I could, uh, meet and greet. 
something like that. Yeah. Uh, so, Sometimes you cancel on me because you're doing those meet and greets in American Fork. Yeah, I do those occasionally. I used to have a gallery at the Provo Town Center Mall. For I had that gallery for about 12 years. That's when I was mostly doing landscapes. But when I started doing political work in 2009 – it got so hard because people kept wanting to come in and talk about everything and I just couldn't get any work done. So, so where does, where does somebody like John go to contact call my assistant? And then we would meet in American fork. Uh, I go in there uh, once or twice a week to sign prints and okay. uh, we can set that up. So that's fine. All right. So here okay. you are writing the quote. I'm putting in the quote. Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to read it till it's all on there. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like a, looks like this video is not sped up. I think that's about the speed. I, do. <laughs> I don't, it's I not a problem. Speed these up because people, it's not are a problem. Like, people are enjoying it, but it looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a lot of like, wispy hair that took you a while to draw all that wispy hair. See, I always think people are going to get bored out of their minds watching me do these things. No. Um, you know, I used really? to, people come <laughs> into my gallery and they'd say, say how long does it take you to do one of these and I, i'm like well you know at that time it was a landscape and i'd say oh, i'll have it done tomorrow patrick and posted they'd that. come in and and they'd come back in like an hour and they wouldn't believe how much i'd already done yeah that was really weird when i used to paint in that gallery i people people didn't really have very many um barriers you know like i'd be sitting there painting and, they, and i'd feel a presence i'd look over my shoulder and the face would be right here somebody would lean over and go, what are you doing <laughs> i was like oh i'm working on a painting <laughs> and you need to work on brushing your teeth oh my goodness <laughs> so so what was funny was i took some tape and i just put some tape on the carpet you know kind of around my studio area and that was like magic everybody knew they weren't supposed to cross the tape even though i never said anything and cut back on that a lot uh let's see i really liked the one with george washington's vision that that he was given oh yeah that's a cool one thank I'm you telling you john you got to put that one angel in of liberty next time um what's that you got to put that video in your newsletter next time oh uh, yeah yeah okay <laughs> all right so here's the quote of course we all know biden is the intellect of the democratic party kind of a grin with a body behind it clint eastwood Something about that quote I thought was kind of funny and yeah. pretty accurate. Uh, you know, he's he's it's it's sad. You know, if he if he wasn't the person he is, such a flaming leftist, I'd feel some sympathy for the guy and think that he it was elderly abuse. But this guy, he's bad news. So yeah. uh, I just can't wait till he's out of there. Honestly, we need to get Trump or DeSantis back in. That would be the best thing for this country. I think. Uh, speaking of, did you want to show the Trump sketch you did? Yeah, show that this is one I did uh, today, actually. So this is a new Trump sketch, just kind of a reflective portrait. And uh, I did another video of this, but geez, I don't want to sit and watch myself draw another one. Well, this one's let's sped just, up. Let's just show little parts of it. Okay, okay, so here I'm laying in the eye and speed up, speed up a little bit. Go to the okay. next one. Oh, look at that. All right. So now we're seeing, <laughs> that's a lot better. Okay. So we, I've got the eye and the nose put in. You can see how the strokes go different directions. That way it kind of creates the form behind what you're looking at. Like their brush strokes is how I look at it. So I'll okay, get speed it up again. This is kind of fun. Oh, yeah. Now people are probably getting irritated at this point. They're like, I want to watch and do the whole thing. But I, I'm going to speed it up. Okay, so I'm laying in the chin. And, uh, you know, Trump's got an interesting face. I've done a lot of sketches. I think I've probably drawn President Trump more than any other artist. And, uh, you know, a lot of these are simply because I do them in my sketchbook. I mean, that's what I call these. These are sketchbook drawings. I keep them in files. And I never even sold them until last year. Before then, I didn't think anybody would be interested. But people like to look at these drawings. And, and so this is my way of relaxing. And I would draw all of these. Um, but well, when you, yeah, I, I've said this before, but you used to do these sketches and then just chuck them. You'd put them in a yeah. folder or chuck them. 
Yeah, you'd yeah. come in my studio and you're like, can I have that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Yeah, I sure. made up with quite a few John McNaughton sketches. Uh, and even if you were to know, you'd be like, no, wait a minute. I don't know if you should have that one, Seth. <laughs> like yeah, that hey, that's Lewis a nice one. one. That C.S. Lewis one, you you did a really nice C.S. Lewis sketch, and you just gave it to me, and I was like, okay, we'll see you later, John. <laughs> well, I like doing them, and they're relaxing, and it's nice yeah. that people like them. You know, I, 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 I've I, drawn in different styles. I've done photographic. I've done, you know, very tightly rendered. These are just sketches, so they're meant to be fast, but it gives them kind of a nice quality, sort of a artistic um like you can feel the the spirit of the artist in them which is cool and so for that reason i guess they've become quite popular i've already sold these two sketches that you see on the on this video today you, you did this you did these today yeah you sold them today i sold them already i put them up you know if you haven't uh if you haven't subscribed to my newsletter those are the people that are the first to have an opportunity to buy these and they always sell the day I do them. And so the way you get on that is you can either go to this McNaughton free book.com slash 2022. And, uh, by giving us your email, it gets you on the, the list. You also get the free book, which is like 112 pages. It's an ebook that tells my biography and shows a lot of my paintings and tells some stories about them. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty, a legit book. Cool. It's not like a, it's not like an ebook ebook. This is legit, like a PDF, huge. Yeah, huge. in fact, originally I made the book because I was going to sell them, and I was like, I'm just going to give it away, uh, and it turned out to be really a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a book. It's a coffee table book. It's a lot more expansive than even this one, and it's about 212 pages, and it's a big nine by twelve, big one. Wow. And it's loaded. Uh, that thing, I, I, I put a lot of effort into making that book. So if you're interested in that, um, you know, go to my website and you can get that one. But uh, you know, one of the things that's fun about Trump is drawing his hair. <laughs> I mean, there's so many, like, interesting things going on in his hair. I've often wondered, you know, if he had normal hair for a man his age, he would look so different. But that's kind of his iconic look. And so it's fun to to draw that. and. Um, I thought this drawing turned out pretty good. That would take me five years to draw. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, you know, I used to teach art lessons. I did it for about 12 years before I started doing political art. And I would teach people how to paint and stuff. And, and uh, you can learn the tricks. You know, it's just some things you got to learn. The, my biggest and most proud accomplishment right now I have to say, and so if you're listening, you want to listen to what I'm going to tell you, is my son, Nathan McNaughton, he goes by N.C. McNaughton. He's doing landscape paintings. He is phenomenal. And I don't, I know I'm biased as a dad, but I taught him how to do this. And his art is, will blow your minds. It's, um, he does these uh, landscapes that are kind of reminiscent of the early 1900s. They're like uh, Thomas Moran, Albert Bierstadt style. And uh, he's selling them on his own website. So if you go to ncmcnaughton.com, check that out because they are amazing and they sell pretty quickly. And the prices for originals are about what I sell for a lot of my prints. And sometimes he's like, Dad, I need to raise my prices. I'm like, no, no, no. You got to start out low and then you build it up. That's that's the way you do it because it's an investment for the collector. So he has the advantage of a father that knows this business. And I also helped him learn the process. But he's his own artist. His, he's got his own style. And it's very, you'll, it'll blow your mind. It'll be more than you expect. So go check that out if you haven't done so already. Um. I think there's one last thing I need to mention to everybody. Okay. And I saved this for the very end. Uh, you've heard me in the past talk about NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Uh, this last this year in January, I launched a collection of NFTs. It's called the Trump Legacy Collection. And I've also added to that a recent one of, of 
Joe Biden. And if you're not familiar with NFTs, uh, these are don't don't they don't want to go to McNifty. I'm going to tell them a, a special deal. Okay. This if you go to johnmcnaughton.com and you click on the McNifty tab at the top, you can see what these are. They're um, uh, an NFT is basically a uh, it's a digital image that's tied to the blockchain code, which simply means that it's the way of proving that, that you have an ownership of this digital image. And every one of them is a unique, one of a kind, original. And they normally sell, they used to sell just, you had to have cryptocurrency to buy them, but we've made it possible that you can get these uh, with credit card. And until this Saturday, if you use a special coupon code, you can get 50% off the price. And we have not done that before. And the reason we're doing this is we want to get more of my customers, my actual followers of the, uh, the McNaughton to get involved in the NFT community. This is like something we're going to be building over a long time. And uh, it's like an investment for a lot of people. But um, you'll want to definitely take a look at that. It's half price until Saturday. And uh, you use the coupon code McNifty. So remember that coupon code McNifty. McNifty is just kind of the name we give these, uh, these NFTs. And I'm throwing this at the end of our thing tonight just to tell you. Uh, go out and get those. They're limited edition. And uh, people are going to freak out when they find, find out about this because uh, some of these McNifties are all, already valued at four times what, five times and more what they bought them for. So check it out, McNifty. Uh, you can see I'm uh, just finishing the drawing here. It's looking pretty decent of Trump. I called this uh, Trump sketch number, uh, portrait number six. And uh, it turned out pretty good. So... Uh, Hope you had fun uh, with us tonight. I've got my new painting I'm working on. I'm going to call it Let's Go Brandon. It's going to be phenomenal. And uh, boy, next week, a lot can happen between now and next week. But until then, I hope you all have a good night. And make sure you go to my website, check it out. Make sure you've subscribed if you haven't already. And uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>